Hello and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. Today's podcast number 1877, the topic is Q&A and the title is Two Exercises to Strengthen Your Squat. Now let's talk with one of my clients, they are a personal trainer and they were asking about exercise ideas to help their uh, clients squat strength. So they have some clients who are struggling with positioning as well as strength in their squats. And they've, the trainer, my client, has been just kind of struggling with uh, what exercises would best help the individuals. But they're feeling a little lost with trying to figure out all the different options. So they just wanted to kind of talk it through. They wanted options that were not machines. They train in a facility that doesn't have a lot of machines and they don't actually like the machines that the, the gym has that they train at. They feel like they don't match uh, people ergonomically. They don't feel very comfortable. So like the leg press is a 45 degree angle leg press. It's, it requires a lot of hamstring uh, mobility, which a lot of their clients do not have. So it can actually aggravate their clients' lower backs more than it'll actually help uh, strengthen their legs. So they have just some equipment hatred <laughs> uh, for the gym they train at. So they wanted non-machine options. They wanted minimal setup time because some of the clients they train are 30-minute sessions, some are 60-minute sessions. So the 30-minute sessions, they can't spend a lot of time getting into uh, you know a, a million things, setting up a million things. And then they wanted minimal technique learning. Again, since they don't have a lot of time to teach everything in 30-minute sessions, and they don't want their clients to feel overwhelmed. Some of the clients are already feeling frustrated that their squats aren't improving. So adding a very highly technical uh, you know, accessory is just going to possibly frustrate them even more. Why I wanted to make this a podcast was I felt like those were uh, categories that many listeners would identify with. Uh, not machines. Being, if you train at a home gym, you might not have a lot of machine options. Or maybe you also train at a commercial gym that the machines just kind of are trash. <laughs> and that definitely happens. So if you have limited machines, these would be good options for you. Also, the minimal setup time. Again, if you have a short workout window, you don't want to spend a lot of time setting up a lot of weird stuff. And the minimal technique learning. If it's not highly technical, we can get into it, get moving faster, get results faster. And typically, if you don't have a trainer there to teach you the movement, less technical movements are better in general when you're just trying to teach yourself. So I liked all of those options and uh, all of those uh, kind of criteria, I guess would be a better way of saying that. And the two options that we, we decided on were walking lunges and RDLs. Now, why is it two? Uh, just because in our discussion, that's what the client asked for were two exercises. They wanted one they could do after squats and one they could do after deadlifts, and this worked. <laughs> so the lunges were something we would do after squats. The, the RDLs are something we do after deadlifts. So that's why it's two. <laughs> uh, walking lunges. I, I love walking lunges for clients. I do them for myself, even though I hate them. Um, I hate them in the sense that they're not as comfortable as just like getting into a leg press or getting into a machine and having the machine guide you and move you. A walking lunge does require more effort, gets you way more winded, and I usually feel like I need to go on a diet after I'm done doing walking lunges. I'm always, I'm getting like my first set or two in and I'm like, dang it, like why am I so damn fat? <laughs> this is awful. So um, they're very effective. But the main reasons why we chose walking lunges as a way to boost your squat were the muscles that it targets and the incredible variety that is possible. The muscles that walking lunges target are everything you need to squat. So you have the adductors, which are the inner thigh muscles. They need to be strong to allow for proper mobility and to properly stabilize the hips and they're involved in the lift. They are involved in the contractile kind of forces and supporting forces that you need for a squat. They're absolutely necessary. It also works your abductors, like your glutes and the, and the muscles that kind of rotate the knees out. So the adductors it uh, play a role in stabilizing your knees on uh, like inward. Uh, abductors 
play a role in stabilizing your knees outward. So they kind of counter each other. And again, that helps improve overall mobility, hip stabilization, and strength in the lift. They also, lunges offer a unilateral focus. So you can ensure that you're building each side equal. It helps to balance out any side to side weaknesses. And due to the variations that are possible, there's an enormous amount of personalization when it comes to walking lunges. Now you can do actually like stationary lunges versus walking lunges. We had just talked about various types of walking lunges because that's what the client liked. Uh, But you can do stationary lunges as well. The variations, you have um, like a, a hang hold where you just hold kettlebells or dumbbells down at your side and you can do, you know, stationary reverse lunges, stationary forward lunges, or you do walking lunges. Uh, that is typically a good position to just lift something heavy. Now, yeah, you can use some wrist straps to hold on to some heavy weights. You can hold, you know, 60, 70, 80 pound hump dumbbells and do walking lunges and that's a very good weight. You can also do a goblet hold where you hold the weight actually in front of you. This is very challenging for your thoracic muscles, so the upper back muscles, core stabilization, and it tends to promote a more uprighted torso because if you lean forward, the weight's harder to hold. So the uprighted torso tends to promote knees more forward, therefore it's a more quad-focused variation. So you have a client, when they do the hang hold position, they tend to hinge too much at the hips, they tend to lean forward too much. You would do a goblet hold position instead and that forces a more uprighted position whether they know what they're doing or not it's just an automatic fix their body will automatically fix that position you can also do a back rack position meaning like where you would rack a a barbell for squats or you could do a safety squat bar uh, if it just makes it a little bit easier to hold on to Uh, i've had clients do with mars bar uh, kabuki transformer bars um, camber bars, any any kind of bar that goes across the upper back is a good position for just heavy weight loads. You have to have a lot more room <laughs> available and it can be challenging for stabilization. But if the client is advanced enough, it's a great way to get a heavy overload. I also do front rack positions. We do zombie holds uh, where your arms are just extended straight out in front of you or you could do literally a front rack like how um, people do in uh, clean and jerk when they have the weight cleaned to their collarbones, their chest, you can hold it in that position as well if the person's comfortable in that position. But there's a lot of variety there and you can choose it based on kind of what's best for each individual. Now the placement in the workout, I would usually do walking lunges after squats and the heaviest accessory. So you would typically do movement preparation, you would get your body ready to move, you would do your heavy squats, you might do one heavy accessory after squats, and then you would finish the workout with walking lunges. Or you would do the movement prep to squats and then the lunges. So you don't have to have a different accessory. The lunges can be the only accessory. So when my client was talking about 30 minute sessions, he does movement prep for 10 minutes, he, he does his squat stuff with the client for about uh, 12 to 15, and then they try to like squeeze in a couple sets of lunges and they're out the door. Uh, but that tends to work out well uh, for him and it's a great way for anybody to kind of get in a good squat accessory that hits pretty much everything you need. Sets and reps, we typically do three to four working sets, somewhere between 12 to 24 steps. Every once in a while I'll have people go outside of that, but that's that's pretty much the typical ranges we do for squats and rep, uh, sets and reps. The second exercise is RDLs, Romanian deadlifts. If you don't know what those are, you can pause the podcast, search for that on YouTube, and you'll see it. (laughs) Um, Now, why would we do RDLs? They are great for strengthening the glutes, and you're going to get glute involvement for sure when you do uh, lunges as well. So I didn't list that, but it's absolutely true. You're going to get a lot of glutes as well. But the RDLs are more kind of heavy focused into the glutes. And that helps with mobility, hip stabilization, as well as strength in the squat. And then you're still going to work on adductor strengthening because we tend to do uh, both conventional and wide conventional. Not sumo where like it's crazy wide, but where we hang a weight between the feet. And maybe we'll do a kettlebell, really heavy single kettlebell. Maybe we'll do it with, um, you know, like a, a, a couple lighter set of dumbbells. But... I like to mix together typical conventional stance and also a wide stance, and that's going to help bring in more adductors. But they are uh, great. RDLs are great 
for helping to increase overall uh, squat performance. The variations we do, like we said, is we do conventional. We do a wider conventional where we hang something between the feet rather than outside of your feet. We'll do barbell, dumbbell, kettlebell. Um, you'll we'll switch between hanging something that we are hanging hold or the back rack position where it's up on your upper back. Now, an RDL with the bar on your back is technically called a good morning, but it fits into the RDL family, so that's what we're calling it. Uh, it's just another variation of an RDL. Now, typically, the placement of RDLs in your program are actually better after deadlifts. So if I have a client squat early in the week and deadlift later in the week, I don't do RDLs after squats most often because I don't want to cause lower back fatigue, the bracing and stabilization that's needed for RDLs. I don't want to cause lower back fatigue in the spinal erectors uh, and the other you know muscles around the hips like QL and some other things. So I don't want to overly fatigue those muscles that then when they show up to deadlift, they're too worn out. So it's better to do RDL like heavy hinge-based accessories after deadlifts. So I do sometimes mix and match certain accessories for certain lifts on different days, depending on when I want the muscle stimulus versus the muscle recovery. So I don't want to damage the the hinging mechanics on squat day when I want them to deadlift, uh, you know, two to three days later. So we would add RDLs after deadlifts. So they would do movement preparation, you would do your deadlifts, and then you would do RDLs. Now that might be beneficial for squats, and that might be why you're doing it, but you're still gonna do it on deadlift day, and RDLs absolutely will help your deadlifts, so there's no worries there at all. It's still a very good accessory for deadlifts. Then sets and reps for that, typically three to four working sets, somewhere between six to 12 reps. Again, I'll go outside of that range every now and then for a client if it's appropriate for their needs, but typically sets of six to 12 reps is what we aim for. So those are two exercises that you can use to strengthen your squat. I thought that would be fun to share. They're, they're quick, easy, get into them, don't require a lot of equipment, minimal setup time, very minimal technique. There is some for sure, but minimal technique compared to other options. So I wanted to share that. I hope you give it a try if you're looking to boost your squat. If you don't typically do lunges, you damn sure should. They're very helpful. And if you don't do RDLs, you definitely should as well. Uh, cool. Okay. Well, if you have any questions, if you need anything, reach out. My email is brutalironjim at gmail.com. If you want to meet with me and talk with me about training, uh, if you want to work together as a client, we're offering free 15-minute consultations. You can sign up for that on email, brutalironjim at gmail.com. Or you can go to my website, uh, www.brutalironjim.com. Golly, if I can say it, that would help www.brutalirongym.com. There we go. I just need to slow down. <laughs> I get too excited. Uh, you can go to the one-on-one -on -one services page, and there you will see uh, the different services we have and a link to sign up for the free 15-minute consultation. So I hope if you ever need anything, there's a million ways to reach out, and you don't hesitate. Cool. Well, if you like the podcast, please share the podcast. If you like the podcast, please consider donating to support the podcast, which you can do on our website. Also, if you like the information we share in the podcast, you can find more from us on our social media channels. You can find us and follow us on Instagram and YouTube under the name Brutal Iron Gym. As always, I hope this was helpful, and thank you for listening.